He's Marler, and this is his music show. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another craptastic episode of the Marler Music Show. My name is David, otherwise known as the Marler, and today um something i haven't done on the youtube channel yet and so this is something i was doing on my spotify channel a while back my spotify podcast and so i thought that i would do start doing it on here from time to time for certain things so those are top lists top fives top tens or whatever so the one i'm doing today is my top 10 and there were only 10 but my top 10 mike portnoy dream theater albums so what i've done is i've taken the 10 albums that he was involved with with dream theater here and i'm ranking them from 10 to 1 and for my taste for the way i rank them for me and how i like them and what i think of them. i know this list is probably a lot different for a lot of different dream theater fans um but th this for me is is the way that i feel about all these and like probably listen to the most based on this order and that's actually i can't help the order I feel like which ones do i listen to the most the least or whatever so um that's what we're going to do today um take a look at this it's not going to be long and drawn out i'll just give probably you know so especially the the bottom half is just very small thoughts on or whatever don't take a lot of your time i know you like to do you got better things to do watch me um spout all day so anyway here we go at number 10 i've got when dreaming day unite um th this is an album that it was uh, their very first actual full release. Um, I don't believe it was on a major label. Um, and so when, when they first came out, a lot of people didn't know about this album because it wasn't a major label release. And it was very obscure for a long time. Um, and for a long time, very hard to find. I think they finally re-released it um, a few years after their first album, maybe. I can't remember exactly when they released it but um it was out for mass for mass release several years later so um but yeah it's it's number 10 for me mainly because it doesn't have the same feel as a lot of their stuff and james labrie is not on there which i you know i think james labrie's got his issues with his voice over the years even when it was really good um but it's not the same being a dream theater album without james labrie so i'm going for number 10 for that one Number nine is, um, this is kind of ironic that it's like this, the bottom two are the first one Portnoy was involved with and the last one he was involved with. Number nine, Black Clouds and Silver Linings. Um, it's a good album. It's, it's not great, obviously. I don't think it's in their top half of, of albums. Black Clouds and Silver Linings is a good album. I don't think it's great. It's got a few good songs. The best... Uh, being the Shattered Fortress, which is the last song from the 12 Step Suite um, that was written about Mike Portnoy trying to get sober and, and, and being a recovering alcoholic. Um, th that's a really good song. Um, you know, uh, past that, you know, Count of Tuscany is okay. Um, everything else is just decent on it. And, and, and for me, um, it's that's why it's number nine it's just it's just not a fantastic album in my opinion so um i've got that one at number nine uh number eight is falling to infinity um this was their third major label release in terms of full album um this one ironically for me um once i really got into dream theater very heavily which was probably when scenes came out metropolis part two this one actually was one of my favorites for a while. And I think one reason for that was um, I had not really gotten into progressive, heavy type music. And I say heavy, progressive type music at that time. Um, and so a lot of the songs in here, a little more poppy sound, a little more straight up rock sound, a little more, a little shorter. And so I guess I appreciate it a little bit more. Um, but over the years, as they put other albums out, and I've listened to their catalog over and over again, um, this album has fallen way down for me. You know, there's a few good songs on it. Um, Hollow Years is very good. Peruvian Skies is very good. 
Um, Just Let Me Breathe is one of my favorites on the album. So it's got some really good stuff, but as far as overall for me anymore, it's just not where it used to be. Um, so that one comes in at number eight. Number seven is Octavarium. Um, th this is down kind of low for me, and I kind of struggled with this because when it came out, um, here again, I thought it was one of their greatest albums ever, right? Um, because it followed Train of Thought, which we'll get to where that is in a minute, but it's really good train of thought is and octavarium seemed like a pretty good follow-up um and that was actually the tour that i saw him on the first time and I, I loved it front to back over the years i still love it not quite front to back i think the title track gets a little bit too long and drawn out for me sometimes um but yeah I mean, there's a you know there's a ton of good songs on this album that are very um that are very good live you got panic attack um the root of all evil is a fantastic song as well and so it's, it's got some good songs uh, i walk beside you very good songs but it's kind of dropped in order for me over the years and that's why it's down at number seven on this list at number six i've got their first full um release on a major label and that is images and words um now, this is one that has kind of gone the opposite way. I, I realize it's only at number six on this list, but it's kind of gone the opposite way for me. Um, it's one that when it first came out, you know, the first song I ever heard obviously was Pull Me Under, and I thought it was a fantastic song. Um, and a friend of mine had the album, and I listened to it, and I was like, it's okay. You know, there were a few songs. I, I'll pull, I like Pull Me Under. I like to take the time. Um another day was a good one i thought and that was it and then as the years went by i started you know they put an album out and i'd go back put an album out and i'd go back saw them live and then i started realizing how really good this album was especially to be a band's quote debut album and so it's kind of it kind of moved up over the years um like i said i know it's only at number six but I feel like the top five are going to show why that this one is only at number six. So that brings to number five. Here we go. Number five is Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence, um, which is, in some people's opinion, probably too low for this. I don't know. You know, it was it's another double disc from them. Um, one that the second CD is, you know, uh, concept. Uh, the first one to me the first one the very first song right off the rip the glass prison is one of my favorite dream theater songs of all time it's one of their heaviest of all time at least up to that point um and possibly one of their best songs of all time i, I don't know but it's it's very very good and it kind of recharged me getting into them a little more um it's got some really good songs on the first disc and then the, you know the second disc um being six degrees it, that's fantastic if you've ever been able to see that live it's incredible to see that front to back live um the first time i saw them they did that front to back live and it's it's very good and so th this album is one that um might belong a little higher on a lot of people's list but for me it's number five and um that that doesn't vary for me with, with them on this album because it's i've always been consistently listened to it certain parts you know and i can I always listen to the second disc all the way through most of the time because any of the pieces of that that aren't together it just there's something missing with it uh so we go from there to number four which is metropolis part two scenes from a memory um concept album released before six degrees um and this thing has got a lot of great songs on it that honestly can stand on their own <laughs> But when you put them all together in one piece, it is freaking amazing. I, unfortunately, I've never been able to see them do um, this all the way through. Um, back in tw late 2019, I lived up in Memphis, and they were coming there. And what they were doing on that tour was is they were doing uh, probably four or five songs off of... Uh, what was the name of the last one before that? I can't remember. Doing uh, four or five songs over distance over time. That's what it is. And then ever going into doing all the scenes of a memory. And then their encore would be like another song from distance over time. And then like 
Some might pull me under as I am, whatever. Um, I had tickets, some that came up, I couldn't go. And I hate that I wasn't able to see that all the way through. But I've seen him do a few songs off this album. Um, I've seen him do, I think, Strange Deja Vu. I've seen him do Beyond This Life. Um, I've seen him do Home. And of course, um, The Spirit Carries On, I've seen him do a few times. And that may be the actual masterpiece on on the whole thing. It's, it's very good, very melodic, very soulful, very catching touch it whatever adjective you want to use about the way it can make you feel in terms of emotion in a kind of maybe a solemn way but a hopeful way that song does so yeah th this is one that's you know it's it's at their top um, a lot of a lot of people would argue this is their best album of all time and i can't totally disagree with that i just know for me it's number four so um number three systematic chaos this might surprise a lot of people um, Systematic Chaos was one that was the second before the last with Portnoy in the band. And a lot of people weren't crazy about it when it came out because it was maybe not as good as Train of Thought. A lot of people didn't think it was good as Octavarium or Six Degrees or whatever. But this is one actually that I've rediscovered over the past month. I went to go see them about a month ago. And so I started listening to their old catalog again just to get back and, 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 you know, revisit these songs, these albums to kind of see what I remember, anything new I caught. And I got to say, guys, when I listen to this one again, it skyrocketed to me uh, because you've got In Presence of Enemies Part 1, and then you put that, that's the first song. The last song is Part 2. You put them together. It's a great, great group of songs or, or two tracks together that go together fantastically. I think Forsaken is a very good song. It's a little poppy, but a little different, but I, I love the guitar riffs and hook in it. Um, Constant Motion, very heavy. One of the heaviest songs I've ever done. Fantastic live. I've seen him do it. The same with the Dark Eternal Night. Great song. Great riffs. <clears throat> great. So John Petrucci at some of his best playing, in my opinion. Um, Repentance, you know, that's the, the that was the next last piece in the 12-step sweet and it's 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 very melodic very kind of slower low-key but it's a pretty good song prophets of war is definitely the dinger on this thing man it's it's just not not there um ministry of lost souls very good song as well since i've rediscovered a lot of their albums and i think it's a fantastic album and one that i'm really glad i rediscovered and have have, have noticed some things that I, I liked that i'd forgotten i liked about it so we got two more left now. We go to number two, and that's their second major league release, Awake. Um, this song, this album is was, was very close for me for being their best. Um, it, it starts off at six o'clock. Really good song. Caught in the Web is fantastic. Um, Innocence Fade is a very good song. Voices. Voices is in my top five Dream Theater songs of all time. I, I love the changes in it, and the, the it's almost like an orchestration, and I just can't, I can't say enough about it. Um, you know, it's got some heavy stuff like Lie in there. Um, it, I think it's, it's, it's a really good album. And here again, when it first came out, you know, my musical brain in terms of what I was hearing and liking didn't line up with this type of sound and i thought you know and back then i thought to myself i was one of those guys that was kind of stuck in a, if i hear a band i want to hear their sound every album or what we think is their sound every album or if i hear an album i want it to sound the same as the track they you know their, their first single off of it and be like a root no <clears throat> that's not the way it's supposed to work and so i couldn't appreciate this at the time but here we are almost 30 years later and I think it's one of their greatest albums ever. It's my number two. And so very last and number one, and if y'all have been doing Process Elimination, you know exactly what this is. Um, train of Thought. Train of Thought. Um, I've mentioned this before on a couple of previous episodes, and I think Train of Thought not only is their greatest album ever, I think it is one of the greatest metal albums ever. Um possibly the greatest progressive metal album ever. And in my mind, one of the greatest 
albums ever in the rock genre, period. And there's a lot of people, especially in general public, be like, oh, you're crazy. And, and who's Dream Theater? Well, and that's why you don't understand about this album, because if you haven't heard of them and you haven't listened to them, you don't know. And I've always I've always said to people that um, say they don't like Dream Theater or that they can't get into them or whatever it is, you know, here's the thing about them. You have to have patience to listen to this band because their songs are long. A lot of progression changes, a lot of stuff going on. And to be able to digest all that and reconcile what's going on when you're hearing all this and be able to process it and appreciate it, it takes time. It takes time. You can't listen to a Dream Theater album, um, especially in you know their heyday period, one time and go, Okay, I get it. No, you've got to listen to it several times. Um, but yeah, Train of Thought, man, it's 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 my favorite from theirs of all time. Uh, my only regret about this album is I didn't get to see them on this tour. But um, the, the only song on here for me that I will occasionally skip, occasionally, is Vacant. Because it's just, it doesn't have the same feel as the rest of the album. But a lot of times I won't skip it. I'll listen to it because... It's so short compared to the rest of the songs. It's like, okay, just let it play. But, you know, it stars As I Am. Fantastic song. Heavy as hell. Great. This Dying Soul. The second part of the 12-step uh, suite. Awesome. Endless Sacrifice. Starts off slow, builds up, gets real heavy. Just, and it just, it, it nails live. I've, I have seen this song. It is, it is rocking live. Honor Thy Father. Maybe, in my opinion, the best song on the album. It, it's just, it, it's, it, 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 it speaks to a lot of people who were in that situation. I fortunately was not one of them, but I've known people that were. It's fantastic lyrically. It's a fantastic song. Uh, just, just heavy. And you've got vacant. We talked about that stream of consciousness. And then it closes out in the name of God. And it's just, it's, it's an awesome album. It's just by far their heaviest all the way through. Um, and I think by far their best, and I think it was their shining moment. I don't think they'll ever, especially now that Mike's out, Portnoy's out of the band, they'll never do anything close to that good again. And so there, there you go, my top ten Dream Theater albums with Mike Portnoy, which was all ten he was involved in. I, you know, I thought about doing just. I think they've got fifteen out now. I've done five without him. I thought about doing just you know fifteen to one, but quite honestly, the, the five they've done without Mike Portnoy have not been great that one distance over time, I think is by far the best album they put out without him. Um, I do love that album. And if I ever do a great at my top 10 dream theater albums period of all time, that would probably, mm. it, it might trump one of these. I'm not going to say which one it might trump one of those and fall. No, I'll go ahead and say it. It would trump one dream and day where you uh, unite uh, easily. It could go a little higher than that, but it would definitely be at number 10 at the very worst. I think it's a great, great album. But other than that, um, the self-titled they did, um, Dramatic Turn of Events, The Astonishing, and, and the new one, I did. That they're okay. You know, at best, they're okay. I, I think when he left the band, um, they lost something that I don't know if they realized they were going to lose or not. Um, he, 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 you know, when him and John, my young, I don't think I'm pronouncing his last name right, but when him and John, my young Petrucci met when, um, they were in, in school together, you know, it, it was those three, the main songwriting force in that band, um, you know, at least up until they got Labrie and then, but as far as the musical part, those three. And then when they got Jordan Rudess, I think he became a lot more integral for that band. And it shows. It really shows in their stuff after he came. Um, so for a very long time, you had those three, four musicians writing the majority of the material in a cohesiveness and a strength and tightness that they, as far as songwriting goes, that they haven't been able to touch since. You know, um, they've had some good songs and all of their albums that they've put out without Mike 
have had some good songs, but nothing compares to virtually anything else on this list except for Distance Over Time. Um, you know, I, I saw them live about a month ago, and they're good live. They're still very good live. It's great musicianship. And Mike Mangini is a great drummer. He is. But the difference was the songwriting element that Portnoy brought to the band and the little flair that Portnoy would do with his drumming that just gave it a different feel. Um, and I think it's really shown over the past, oh, my God, it's been almost 13 years now, um, how much that it's missed in their music, at least on record. Um, but say la vie, that's life. You know, fortunately we got 10 really good albums, um, out of that version of the band. And one can only hope that one day, you know, I say bury the hatchet, you know, I, I don't, I've heard different stories about why he left. Um, I'm not going to get into that it might be something for another episode, but, uh, I've heard different stories, you know, from, I did read something a couple weeks ago where like him and Petrucci talk a lot, uh, and everything. And so there's, there's nothing, nothing bad going on there. Um, I think it would be nice at some point for them to reunite to an extent. Don't know if it'll ever happen or whatever. If it does great, I'd love to see it again. If not, it is what it is. But, um, anyway, just wanted to do this just to show, you know, my appreciation for those albums with him and give you my thoughts on what I think the, the best are and how they're ranked from 10 to 1. So that's all I've got on that. And you're saying, thank goodness, please let me out of this. Well, so in all seriousness, guys, um, let me know what you think about this episode. You know, um, comment below. Um, you can email me at the Marlar Music Show at gmail.com. Let me know there. Give me ideas for other episodes, what you'd like to see different, what you'd like to see more of, less of, um, mainly me probably. Um, but yeah, just let me know uh, what you think and um, like and subscribe if you haven't already, please, and share this with other people. So I'm going to sign off on this wonderful afternoon and say, as I always do, be good to each other, be good to yourself, and life will be good to you. Peace.